<laughs> I'm hoping to show you the simplest potential divider circuit and really get you used to the idea of sharing out the voltage from a battery or a power pack across different resistances. This is the simplest kind of potential divider circuit. It's one loop, a series circuit with a um, battery with four 1.5 volt cells, so that's about six volts. A rheostat, which is called a variable resistor, which essentially is just a long bit of wire coiled up so that I can change how much of the wire is in the circuit. And a fixed resistor, which is a 138 ohm resistor. And this rheostat, when it's on its full resistance, will, it will be almost exactly the same. It will be 135 ohms. So I can show you, I hope, some really simple maths to do with sharing out this voltage in the ratio of these two resistances. So firstly, I'm going to take my voltmeter and I'm always going to use my voltmeter across my components. So here across the battery, we can see there is five, roughly five volts coming from that battery pack there. I can quite see that. Okay, now, these at the minute have roughly equal resistances. So what I would expect to see is that voltage shared out equally between those two. What that means in practice is that the energy given to the charge here is being dissipated equally by this, the variable resistor, and this, the fixed resistor, as they have equal resistances. But this really starts to get interesting when I start to move this slider here. By moving this in this direction, I'm going to decrease the resistance. So have a little predict to yourself, in what way is that voltage there going to change? The energy given to the charge here is being dissipated by this, through this wire here, and then through this resistor here. That's staying fixed. This voltage is reading how much energy is being dissipated here per unit charge. Decreasing the resistance here. And when I get this to near zero resistance, you will see now all of that voltage given to us by the power pack, by the, the battery, is being dissipated in that resistance there. Let's see that whole thing as a circuit diagram then, and, and I can talk you through the maths. This here is the battery here, four cells in series. This is the variable resistor there. And this is the fixed resistor, just there. Keep the maths nice and simple. I'm just gonna talk about this resistor being a naught to 100 ohm variable resistor, this one being a 100 ohm fixed resistor, and this being six volts. So initially, I could have this set on zero ohms. Now clearly, the ratio is zero to 100. So if you like, 100% of that voltage is here the voltmeter reads six. As I increase that, I start to change that ratio. Let's say that now reads 50 ohms. What will the voltmeter read? Well, this is now a ratio one to two. If I share out the six volts in the ratio one to two, then it's going to be two to four. Six volts in total, so four volts here. If I increase that resistance, then I can get that to 100. And the ratio is now one to one. And share out six in a ratio one to one means you've got three volts across here and three volts across here. So, don't worry about the tangle of wires now, but I've just tried to leave the meters above 
the components they're measuring across. So this is measuring across the power pack, the battery, and we've got almost completely six volts. This currently has a near zero resistance, so almost none of the voltage is being used up, if you like. None of the voltage is being dissipated across this one here. All of the voltage is across this. As I increase the resistance of this, you will see the voltage begin to be shared out more in favor of this one. The actual input voltage, if you like, doesn't change. The supply voltage hasn't changed at all. And that total voltage is equivalent to this one plus this one. So here's an application for a potential divider circuit like this. It's the same thing, we've got the rheostat in series with a fixed resistor. They've both got pretty much the same resistance. Therefore, they've both got an equal share of the voltage. That's a six volt motor. So as I increase um, the ratio of this resistance to this resistance, so that's a difficult thing to get your head around. As I reduce the resistance of this, the ratio of this resistance to this resistance increases. And this voltage is shared out in that ratio. So the voltage across here will increase. Now there's a certain point at which the voltage across here is enough to start the motor rotating. This motor is in parallel with this resistor, so therefore it's got the same voltage. And what I'll be able to do is control the, control the speed of that motor quite finely. Whereas if I had it connected just to a switch, I wouldn't be able to throttle it up like that. I wouldn't be able to increase the speed of the motor all the way up to roughly the six volts that it optimally works at. I can reduce that speed in that same way. So what I'm doing is changing the ratio here to here to effectively change the voltage on this motor. So I then replaced the voltmeter with a motor and you can see that as I reduced the uh, resistance here, the ratio of this resistance to this resistance increased. Therefore, the voltage across here was greater than the voltage across here and the motor turned on and I was able to control that ratio, therefore control the voltage here. But it really gets interesting when you're using, instead of a, just a manually variable resistor here, you're using a variable resistor which varies with a different stimulus. For example, a thermistor, which varies the resistance with temperature, or a LDR, a light-dependent resistor, which varies resistance with how much light is shining on it. Let's say this motor was actually a cooling fan. I'd want that fan to come on when the temperature got to a certain point. So the type of variable resistor I'd like to use would be a thermistor. Thermistors reduce in resistance when the temperature is higher. So I would have a thermistor calibrated against a fixed resistance such that the thermistor was low enough resistance at a certain temperature that this was great enough, the ratio of this to this was large enough so that the motor came on. The same works with any type of sensory circuit. If I wanted, for example, a bulb to come on when things started to get dark, then I'd want to use a light dependent resistor on this side of the circuit. with a fixed resistor over here. Because here, the resistance increases when there's less light. So the resistance of this compared to this would be greater when this was not illuminated, when it was not having any light come onto it. And that could mean that I could have a light come on when it got to a certain point. Now there is another video that I have which shows you a little bit more detail about how this works in street lamps because we don't always just want it to gradually come on responding exactly to the external conditions. We may want it just to switch on at a certain point.
The last thing I'd like to say about potential dividers is just how simply they are shown in exam papers. Okay? This I've shown you the standard circuit diagram that you're used to and talked to you about the ratio of this resistance to this resistance. They normally like to show the diagram in that direction in exams and they simplify it. They simplify it by taking out all of this and by taking out this section here. And what they say is this side is the input. So they might write plus, minus, and say there's six volts between there and there. And say this is the output. And ask you to work out what the voltage is there, given a certain ratio of resistances. But you shouldn't worry about that because it's really exactly the same question that they're giving you. Let's say this ratio was five ohms to one ohm. Well, that would be a very simple one to work out. You'd say that this had a voltage of one volt across it because this voltage six between here and here is shared out in the ratio five across here to one across there. I think probably the hardest questions they ask you about this are when you have to really think about which variable resistor is where. So if there is a variable resistor here, which is a thermistor, then that is going to reduce resistance in when it gets hotter. So that as it gets hotter, the ratio of this to this is going to reduce. Therefore, the voltage here will increase. And that is really just about remembering exactly how resistors and thermistors behave when their temperatures are changed. So just remember a light dependent resistor has a lower resistance when it is brighter. A thermistor has a lower resistance when it is hotter. So at a higher temperature, the resistance is lower. Thank you for watching Gorilla Physics. Please do like, share and subscribe. That really helps me be more useful to more people. Also, please go ahead and check out Gorilla Chemistry and Gorilla Biology. You can expect the same sorts of things, past paper questions and videos to help you understand topics. Thanks once again for watching.